Okay. So, let us start that next week, the new week, which is uh, we will talk about the speech processing application. Mainly, I have chosen three applications, but there are a lot of applications. So, if time permit in last week, I may cover the, uh, the speaker and uh, the, spe uh, the identification that the speaker recognition and identification that part also I covered. So, little bit of GMM I will cover in that topic and vector quantization I will cover. But today, we will let us talk about that uh, this kind of application like speech synthesis and ASR. I have not detail covered that ASR because it is itself can take several classes. So, first I covered that speech synthesis applications that how do you develop the speech synthesis application, what are the pros and pros and everything and then ASR and then we give out that recent train in ASR and then I talk about the action conversion which is my dream in the research this area. So, a lot of research work is going on in the speech action conversion and speech conversion kind of things. So, we will discuss about all those things okay, in this total week. So, let us talk about the speech synthesis popularly known as you know that TTS text to speech synthesis system TTS. Now, if I if I see the name text to speech, so I can say that I require the machine let us there is a machine or there is a systems where that system will take input as a text and then output it produce as a speech. Now, if I remember, if you remember that speech production mechanism, how the speech is produced, that message planning, then that coding and then execution by the vocal tracks and produce the speech. Okay. So, speech production, this part, which convert the text to speech, means input text to speech, not only with this production model, but also other text processing model is also important. Because when we say something, it is not just segmental information, it is contain the supra segmental information also. So, if I see the basic block diagram of the speech synthesis, then I can say that text may contain some. So, what is the content information in the text? Some linguistic information, non linguistic information, paralinguistic information. So, there is a linguistic information, there is a paralinguistic information there is a non linguistic information all those information have processed in our mind and executed by this vocal tract system to produce the speech. So, the speech signal if I say it contain all the linguistic information, non linguistic information and paralinguistic information all those three are there in the speech signal. Now, if I want that a system or a machine or an algorithm should develop such that it will take input text and convert it to speech. So, that all kinds of text processing and that signal processing are required in case of development of TTS. So, if we see in the slides, if I show you the text to definition of text to speech, text to speech software is used to convert word or sentence from a computer documents into audible speech spoken through the computer speakers. So, TTS is nothing but a input is text and output is speech. Application, if I have a good TTS, think about that it provides the hand free operation, it removes the digital divide. Suppose, I cannot there is a lot of people are there they cannot read the text, but they can speak because speech is you can say the spoken language there is a is used for the communication. The person who does not know anything about that written text, he can also speak. If you go to that village area, a lot of people they cannot read, but they can speak. So, what I want that suppose I have an information stores or text information stores in computer, you see the many forms, many gadgets, newspapers, all are textual information. If I want to disseminate that information to those kind of people who cannot read, then the TTS is must. That means, the machine can read the text and machine can talk because they understand the spoken version of the language. So, they are comfortable with the spoken version. So, that is called text to speech synthesis and their applications. Now, 
for typically text to speech synthesis system there the first block is called text normalization. If you see if I say open any page whether it is English, whether it is Bengali, whether it is Hindi, whether it is Marathi, if you read any text, any text passages there are lot of normalization is required. Suppose there is a some text content text, so text is running and there is a number 2.35 degree centigrade. Today's temperature is 22.5 or 2 days, 2 days temperature is, is written 35 degree, 35 degree centigrade. When we speak, we never say 35 degree, so we say 35 degree centigrade. So, if you see the, this information, if I say translate in text, then this is 35 degree centigrade. So, those words, so instead of third numerical 3 5, I have to convert 35 degree centigrade. Similarly, suppose I have a phone number 94320. So, see that here we never said 9, uh, uh, 1, 2, 3, so, so 9, uh, 9 lakhs. Uh, 4320 we never said, we said 94320 like that if it is phone number, but if it is rupees then we said rupees then we say 9 lakhs 4320. So, lot of text conversion or text normalization is required. Another way is the abbreviation, if you say if I say if I write doctor then it has to be pronounced as a doctor. So, there is a lot of short form also, when we pronounced with complete form we pronounce. So, there is a lot of text normalization is required, unless it will not when the TTS will produce, but TTS does not know how to produce this. So, this has to be converted in normal text format. So, that is called text normalization. So, if I write the TTS, so there is a input block include block is text. Text may contain abbreviation number or two suppose 2 by 3 Lalin Saroni, then it should be pronounced as 2 by 3. So, all kind of number abbreviation will be there in the text and that text has to be normalized first. Normalization. So, there is a TTS this is called text normalization, text has to be normalized first. Once it is normalized, then this goes to text processing unit. What, how it has to be processed? Because you know text contains some words. So, suppose there is a words and written form of the word and pronunciation form of the word, there is a change. Suppose if you write psychology the written form and pronunciation form is different. So, I can say there is a requirement text processing which can convert the this is called grapheme to phoneme or it, even sometime it is referring G 2 P G 2 P what is grapheme? You know that if I say alphabet A B C D all are grapheme. So, the word written in form of grapheme that has to be convert to in form of pronunciation string, IPS string. I have said in that uh, uh, first week that I can convert my name in IPS string that depends on the pronunciation. So, if I write let us say I write Kolkata, Kolkata it is a graphemic information it has to be convert to its pronunciation information which is kolkata this has to be convert so this is called grapheme to phoneme conversion if i write psychology pc like that way it has to be pronounced written as psychology in pronunciation format which are the phoneme you know the number of if i pronounce psychology so so is the first phoneme so i write so if it is palatal so, I write that symbol, if it is dental so, I write so, that symbol. So, that way all IPS string 
So, pronunciation string has to be represented by a IPA form. So, I get the I pronunciation form of the written word. Okay. So, that is called graphene to phoneme conversion. Details I will come. Then there is a called prosody. If you see, if I say text, if I say I tomorrow I will go to Calcutta, there is a prosody is involved. So, prosody which contain the melody of the spoken form. You can say the melody of the spoken form. I never say I will go like not never said I said I will go to Calcutta. So, there is a lot of variation in supra segmental parameters. So, those supra segmental parameter is not arbitrary it depends on the syntactic structure of the input text. So, even supra segmental parameter like pause duration f 0 and intensity all are varied depending on the syntactic structures of the language. So, last week I will deal about that prosody modeling. So, for prosody modeling some I have to know the syntactic structure of the text even it can goes to pragmatic structure also. So, I have to process the text using NLP natural language processing you know that there is a field called NLP language processing field. So, I have to use some kind of language processing, so that I can model the prosody which is exist in the spoken form. There is a beautiful example suppose, suppose if I write I will go to Calcutta, go to Calcutta even in written language you see there is a gap in between the word, but if you spoken form there is no gap there is no word boundary. So, this is continuous spoken form, but we listen some boundary. So, that based on the supra segmental parameter. So, those are called prosodic word boundary. I will discuss about in prosody modeling that part. So, those called prosodic word boundary. So, some kind of tech processing I require to model the speech prosody. So, that modeling required tech processing. So, there is a lot of text processing block two part mainly one part is convert G 2 P graphene to phoneme conversion second part is that some kind of syntactic semantic and pragmatic information even I have to extract from the text by which I can model the speech prosody. Once I go those information by supra segmental information and G 2 P provide me the segmental information. So, once I know the segmental and supra segmental information I can use some signal processing algorithm which is nothing but a synthesis to produce the speech. So, now I can use the synthesis to produce the acoustics waveform. Okay. So, let us discuss about that abbreviation I have already discussed that you can read uh, uh, many things that uh, text normalization that conversion and abbreviation. And there is a if you know if some if you remember there is a W 3 C standard W 3 C world wide web consortia has a standard under the voice browser activity group that is called S S M L S S M L speech synthesis markup language speech synthesis markup language. It is nothing but a XML structure which is used to do this kind of job text normalization, graphene to phoneme conversion, and prosody that marking. So, when you develop your website, if you all the text, all the written, whatever the written communication is there, if it is tagged using SSML, then it is very easy to synthesize that text when it passes through the synthesizer. So, SSML mainly designed to tag your input text such a way that it can take by a synthesizer engine and process that text because the text is structured and it is processed and it can produce the better synthesized speech. Okay. So, SSML there is a lot of tag sets are there. So, if you uh, there is a study is available you can go through the W 3 C SSML you get a lot of document and that document contain what are the tag sets are there 
so in text normalization they they normal they use say as suppose if i write 35 degree centigrade if i treat this is a word then i can say for this word this grapheme i can say say as 35 degree centigrade okay then there is a call i will come to that uh, pls that uh, the thing that things also there abbreviation also if it is doctors then i can say it is the grapheme information is doctors so i can say the text the grapheme information is let's i write gh is a grapheme information so i can say grapheme information is doctor dr dot and end of grapheme then i can say it can be say as say as doctor so i can define that things so if i define that things ssml take care about that or i can develop a dictionary based approach where all the abbreviation their full form will be there so I, once i get the abbreviation i can run through the dictionary and get the full form okay and that text normalization for number it is difficult because you don't know where what kind of number system is required because sometime if i write 9432091556 is a phone number then i can say this has to read this has to read as 9432091556 we never said like that our uh, 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 that systems so if but if i write 315 rupees rupees 300 and then we never said 315 we say 315 rupees so depending on the context you have to say what kind of normal text normalization you should apply that is called text normalization now for g2p if i details discuss so g2p grapheme to phoneme conversion so text to phoneme or i can say grapheme to phoneme conversion there is a lot of papers you find that for every language the, there is several kinds of G2P engines are available, grapheme to phoneme conversion, where the, uh, the system will take input as a text, which is in grapheme ink information and convert it its pronunciation information, whatever is there. But for Bangla, if you, re, if you st st search in the net grapheme to phoneme conversion for Bangla, you find my paper, uh, which is published I think 2008 or 9, that grapheme to phoneme conversion for Bangla and that is available you can see that we have developed the TTS engine using that graphing to phoneme conversion, but sometimes it is very difficult to develop a rule based. So, there is a you can say there is a lot of approaches are there <coughs> either I can develop the dictionary based approach where I can say I have a two table here graphic information here is pronunciation information. So, there is a w 1 word and there will be a pronunciation of w 1. So, there will be a w 2 word there will be a pronunciation of w 2 words. So, this is one kind of approach which is called dictionary based approach, where I require the pronunciation dictionary of all the words, because I do not know which text will come in my input. So, all the words pronunciation dictionary is required, but you know the words list of words are infinite, you can say that there is a some kind of combined word. So, you can intelligently develop a root word dictionary and you can form a combined dictionary based on on the uh, on the fly requirement, but combining also there is a problem means in Bengali sometime if the two words are combined the middle uh, vowels may be pronounced like that we say uh, we say Rajputra that in Rajputra if it is Rajputra then it is middle vowel is deleted the because Raj is a word and Putra is a word they are combined that is why Rajputra is ok this uh, uh, follow the uh, every word pronunciation if I combine I get Rajputra, but sometime vowel is not deleted like it is not Bonodaftar it is not Bondaftar so that if you pronounce Bonodaftar so there is no there is a vowel O is added so those those kind of complexity are there so if I have uh, but the, the simplest way is that Developed a pronunciation dictionary and or you can say it is called a lookup table in computer uh, programming. So, I can say I have a pronunciation dictionary and I can compare once I get the grapheme word 
I can pick up the pronunciation word from the table. But there is a, if you know the W3C, they have a standard called PLS, pronunciation lexical lexicon specification, PLS, pronunciation lexical specification, pronunciation lexical specification. Details, <coughs> I have already studied the details of PLS of W3C and we have said that some pro problem for uh, present PLS. So, this is nothing but a, uh, you can say it is required by both speech recognition and speech synthesis both I will come. So, the there is a lot of tag sets are there in uh, uh, PLS standard. If you see there is a lexim that means lexicon is started, then there is a metadata, then lexim, then grapheme, then phoneme, then allies and then example. So, they said, but the problem is that they said the some words if have a multiple pronunciation use the prefer attribute choose the correct pronunciation, but it is not always true. Sometimes same word may have different pronunciation even more than one pronunciation more than one means more than two also pronunciation, but both pronunciation are a valid pronunciation in that language it is not dialectic variation. So, we can say I have raised that uh, write that paper that is called homograph problem that homograph are the words with same orthography, but different meaning and different pronunciation. Meaning is not important pronunciation is important. So, homograph, homograph means orthography, grapheme all are same. So, if the pronounce or if the graphemic representation of the word let us it is w 1, but it map to two pronunciation one is w 1 p and maybe the w 2 p the pronunciation is two, maybe three pronunciation is the same word can have a three pronunciation depending on the context where I use that. Okay. So, that is called homograph, graphing is same, but pronunciation is different. In case of Bengali that I can give you the example in Bengali, if we have sorol, if you know the Bengali script, then you know the sorol may have a pronunciation, two pronunciation either it may be sorlo or it may be sorol. So, if it is verb, it is sorlo, if it is adject, uh, if it is adjective then it is simple, sorol means simple then it is sorol. So, all kinds of homograph variation has to be solved. So, it was found that partial speech information of this word somewhat solve that homograph problem, but not always true. Sometimes same word in case of honorific in nature may be pronunciation is some things and if it is non honorific in nature may be pronunciation is different way. So, those kind of variation may not be that means semantic variation there may be a something information that if it is honorific then the pronunciation will be something like Bangla tu eta dhar, but tumi eta dharu. So, those kind of pronunciation variation will be there homograph problem, then homophone problem. So, parts of speech may solve it, you can go through this document I have already explained it. Then parts of speech, then there is a problem is called that homophone problem. Homophone problem is just opposite that different orthography has same pronunciation, different orthography has same pronunciation. So, the orthography representation is same, but pronunciation may be have sorry different orthography may be w 1 and w 2, but the pronunciation is same like that write r i g h t write w r i t write in English both are pronounced as write but depending on the context I can say which right I have pronounced. Okay. So, those problem will be there in PLS. So, those problem we have proposed some solution and we have made that uh, paper to uh, submitted this paper to PLS and they have taken it. So, you, uh, you, you can go through the details papers is available in the net. So, there is a lot of details examples are there lot of analysis I have done on a epic then we can say the rule. Uh, then there is a dictionary that you can say the morphological information is important. 
many country also raise this issue that morphology is important for Korean also morphology is very important like that bar in case of Bangla we have said that finiteness and honorificity information may be required. So, you suggest some kind of uh, morphological analysis for solve the pronunciation problem in Bangla. Okay. So, G 2 P is not that simple many language it may be simple, but uh, in case of Indian language yes it is somewhat simple, but Bangla is not that simple, but in case of Hindi we found that uh, it is little bit of simple compared to other language, because since we have a syllabic language then the pronunciation whatever we write we almost pronunciation to pronounce the same, but it is not always true there may be some variation. In Bengali there is a lot of variation in written script in case of English there is also lot of variation. So, but if you see the unfortunately English pronunciation dictionary is available in the net because that is available, but unfortunately the in Indian language pronunciation dictionary are very rare you cannot find any pronunciation dictionary of other language. So, there is a very tough challenge to develop that TTS in Indian language, but yes we have done something for Bangla some some other group also they are who are doing for that Hindi, Tamil, Telugu all languages TTS are right now in there, but the biggest problem is G 2 P grapheme to pronoun, uh, phoneme conversion which is very important block for the TTS engine. So, W 3 C has an PLS specification yeah, even we can started a community building on that how do we build community communitarily the pronunciation dictionary. There is a website we have developed a web based engine where you can develop the pronunciation dictionary in PLS standard W 3 C PLS standard. So, that is uh, website is available in ID Kharagpur I think it is run at pedagogy main like that the kind of domain name. So, I, at the end I will give you that web address where you can use that website to develop your own pronunciation lexicon in W 3 C format. Okay. Now, there is a other kind of G 2 P approach also, also there the rule based approach that depending on the grapheme position we can develop some rule where rule based approach will pronounce the grapheme to pronunciation conversion will be done, but most uh, 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 most mostly use approach or hybrid approach that some simple rule we develop and then we use the dictionary for all exceptional cases. So, that is called hybrid approach. Then once I done that, that uh, text normalization and G 2 P, let us I am not discussing about the text processing required for prosody modeling, because for prosody modeling I will discuss in the next week, the last week I will be details discuss about the prosody modeling of different languages, English there is a prosody modeling. So, there is a lot of prosody model available. Uh, Fujisaki uh, 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 common uh, common response model, Toby model, all kind of prosody models are there. So prosody modeling is one of the important issue we'll discuss later. So if text processing for prosody modeling we excluded, then G two P is sufficient. So I can say the text text input text will come, and then it will converted normalized, and once it is normalization has done NOR normalization is done, then go to G two P once it is go to G 2 P and prosody modeling that text processing for prosody is combined together for language processing and then it goes to speech synthesis. So, I will synthesis there is a lot of formats are there we will discuss details on synthesis because it is speech processing class. So, we discuss about the synthesis part uh, which output is called the speech. Okay. Now, the one problem is there the text I think many of you know the unicode I think so, because if I write text t x t it is in English. So, it is already there in ASCII code system, but if I write in Bengali, Hindi, Tamil, Malayalam all other languages those codes are come in unicode. So, text input text is in the form of unicode. So, you have to develop you have to take care about the unicode processing. So, once unicode same thing, but every grapheme has a unique unicode. So, I do not have any problem in processing. So, unicode processing is there then based on that you can develop the dictionary normalization G 2 P all kinds of thing based on the unicodes of the text. Okay. 
Then synthesis, there is a lot of algorithms are there in synthesis, articulatory synthesis, parametric synthesis and concatenative synthesis. So, in the next class, I will details discuss about the each of the model articulatory synthesis, parametric synthesis and concatenative synthesis, which is the main part of that TTS engine. So, there is a lot of others approach also there. So, then we discuss, we show some something is available, I can show you, I can listen to you, I can show you the voice, all kind of things. Okay? Thank you.